I spent this entire year having like FOMO, fear of missing out, trying to do everything mm. at one time. And I, I, at the same time, I had some things that were working, but I wasn't giving enough attention. So the rental car business, I, I started, so I did pretty much analyze every single business that I wanted. So I was trying to pursue everything you, single thing you saw on there. I analyzed each one of them and said, how am I doing in this? And so the rental car, I saw that we made like three or $4,000 that first year off of that, off of that one car. Mm. I put no effort into that car though. Wow. <laughs> like it was just, we were renting it out. But at the same time, I wasn't concerned with it because I'm trying to go learn about a tow truck or learn about <laughs> a pest control business or trade stock options yeah, yeah. or all, trying to create an app. All that stuff I was trying to do at the same time. And so I wasn't paying attention to what was working. So I had to take a step back and say, what is actually working for us right now versus what am I just wasting time doing trying to build multiple streams of income? If I focus on one thing, I can grow that and then I can actually branch off and get other streams within that one stream if you want to get build actual multiple streams of income the correct way in my opinion build something up to where it can start branching off because now i've become an expert in this space yeah. i am surpassing turo and being able to say we can teach we can talk about how to become a car rental operator who's teaching that part welcome to the your podcast mentor show with jonathan jones here you will learn how to start launch and monetize your podcast in addition to hearing the latest trends and the latest and greatest things happening in the podcast industry. Are you ready? What's going on? What's going on, family? Uh, welcome to the Your Podcast Mentor Show. And I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And you all know this is where we really dive in talking about podcast how-tos. We do podcast news and we also do interviews. And today, you know, I'm in the city. I'm in the H-Town. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I had the opportunity to, to, to hit up my brother, uh, Miss, Mr. Marlon Walls, as y'all might know him. I call him Maserati Marlon, okay? <laughs> I call him Maserati Marlon. Y'all going to find out uh, just in a little bit. But man, Marlon, how, how you feeling, man? Doing good, man. Glad to see you over here in H-Town, man. It's, it's good to see you in person again. I've seen you probably a couple of times, not too many, but I'm, I'm glad to see you, bro. Yeah, man. Good, 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 good to see you, brother. Yes, sir. Proper greeting. You know what yeah, I'm saying? For sure. But uh, yeah, so... You know, last time, last time I had you on, the, last time I had you on my other podcast, For Beyond sure. the Ball, because yep. we were talking about, you know, you growing up student athlete and, and, and doing everything that, that you did in that side. Uh, we talked a little bit about entrepreneurship. Really popular episode, by the way. Yeah. Really, really, really. popular episode. Yeah, I'm man. Really popular that. episode. Uh, and so now I want to bring you back because I feel like a lot has happened since the last time we talked. <laughs> uh, you know, some paths have, have changed on my side, but... Also with you, man. So now, you know, because before you had, what, how many cars did you have before? When did we talk last? I can tell you better based on the when the episode. We'll was. say it, it was it was early COVID, early COVID. Mm, okay, early COVID. I mean, if it's too early, then I mean, we had no cars back then. <laughs> <laughs> so because COVID started in like March of 2020, and um, I think we started we started building our fleet in August of 2020. So. It depends on like what time frame we was in. So if we was like late August, I just say end of August, end of 2020, we ended off with one car. End of 2021, we ended off at 10. So if we, any somewhere in between Lord. there is, how, is where we were at at that time. Lord have mercy. First, first of all, let me, let me give you proper introduction. Yeah. So, so, so Mar Marlon Walls, uh, not, not only is he uh, one half of the Money Monopolizers podcast, um, he's, he, he was, you know, he, he did have, you know, one, two, three cars that, that, he, that he was uh, renting out. Now he has, he has a freaking fleet <laughs> of, of rental cars that, that he's doing. So, man, Maserati, Marlon, Marlon the Mogul. So, man, Marlon, so from you going there, right, we're just going to dive in. From you going from one car or no cars mm -hmm. to you where you are now, like, what, what did you have to shift in your mind for, for, for that to take place? Because one, renting a car, it, it's, a, it's a whole business. You know, it's, sure. like, like it's not nothing that, you know, you wake up, you say, oh, I'm going to start renting cars. And then people just start doing it. Like, so just, just talk, talk us down the process, man. For sure. So I guess just giving like a brief background. So myself and my dad are both in the rental car business. We um, rent out cars to people who are just pretty much looking for something to drive around day to day. Most people are familiar with a platform called Turo. That's usually where most people think of like the Turo business. And that's where people, when they think of rental cars, they think of Turo lots of times. I think, I think of it more so in terms of there's rental car business and then there's Turo who runs their own business that connects people who have cars and people who want a car to rent. So it's just, I just wanted to point out that, that discrepancy because I'm in the rental car business. I'm not in the Turo business. So it's a, it's a difference between that. But um, as far as getting started, like 
back um, in August of 2020, like I said, that's when we, me and my dad had both first bought our, uh, our first car and for our fleet. And the goal was really just to find a way to just make some extra uh, passive income. It was just what people always say, passive income. This is not passive. I would tell them that. <laughs> uh, passive means that you are an investor. This is actually running a business. And so it's okay to run a business, but I just want to make that distinct distinction that this is not necessarily passive. This is you establishing an entire business model to be able to pay you because it still pays very well. It's just a fact of uh, being able to dis- dis- distinguish between a business versus investing. But that was a lot of the mindset that I have now. That was what was required to scale that fleet, though, to where we are today and scale it the right way. Because a lot of people, they don't, if they can just go finance 10 cars, they'll do it right away. But they need to develop the mentality along with it. That was what, what the main requirement was to scale my fleet up. Because as we got to, from, it was went from one car to 10 cars. It's not so much about um, buying more cars. It's more so about how, how you, can you manage that amount of cars. And so that was the my main thing is figuring out how can we manage this at a high level to where we're not doing this all day every day and have nothing else that we can do like to continue to grow. So by establishing systems in place, now we were able to um, continue to scale our fleet without necessarily continuing to scaling our workload at the same time. Because now we get people in mm-hmm. place, we get software in place, we get things that can allow us to continue to grow the business while the business is still operating. So that's really, now at this point we're at 25 cars because of the fact that we have the systems in place to help us out along the way as opposed to just trying to run the play, quote, quote unquote. Hold on, wait a minute, Marlon, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute, man, wait a minute. You say y'all at 25 cars now. Yes, sir. And so, I mean, I want to be at a lot more. The problem is I'm waiting to get more financing so we can really start just take off all the way. So I even mentioned earlier before we got on the call, I'm in the process of getting my dealer's license. That's going to allow us to be able to get cars in a different strategy as opposed to going to a dealership and just buying a car outright through a pre-approval. Like it's, There's levels to it, and Turo was like the training wheels. But now it's like <laughs> you gotta if you want to if you want to become like a legit rental car company, like it's just a, it's a different mentality you got to have. There's different ways to. Um, to scale your fleet up as opposed to what, you, what most people were talking about just to get into, into, into Turo. So that's kind of where I'm at today. Turo's a training wheels, huh? Yes, oh, very much so. Yeah. How, 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 did you, how did you come to that realization? Was it just you being in the industry over time? You started to realize that, oh, this isn't, you are, or I need to know more information. How did you come to that realization? So it's re- it definitely came with time, but it can't, it comes through looking around and seeing what are the other players in the industry doing. So in the beginning, you think about rental cars. Who do you think about when you think of rental cars? Probably Enterprise, Hertz, Avis. Those are the big rental car companies. What are they doing that's different than Turo? Or the people that rent on Turo, I'm going to actually say that. Turo is a platform that is competing, that is trying to compete with Enterprise. But they, so they created a platform that is called a share economist or ride share space, meaning that they created a, a space for the common person to be able to rent cars out to somebody else. But these are, so it's like a mini miniature business that you're building on Turo. The big companies, they are running their own established business. They don't need somebody else to go market because they're marketing themselves. They, they're, they're running the, uh, their applicants' uh, motor vehicle ch- background checks themselves. They're doing these things to make sure they qualify their renters. That's a, so what I really was uh, experienced, I went to actually, um, there was a conference called the International Car Rental Show. That show was probably the, the pivotal point for me in regards to my mentality as a rental car fleet owner. Because that show, it pretty much brings in all the independent car rental operators. So people that, anybody but the Enterprise, Avis, and Hertz, all the other independents that are trying to become that, that type of level, that show was not, so there's, an in-between, there's, there, there's um, levels to it. Uh, Ride share hosts, like Turo, Hire Car, Get Around, independent car rental operators, the big three, Enterprise, Avis, Budget. So this international car rental show was, the, was that second tier. The people that are independent operators trying to continue to scale their fleet. So me being around them, that puts me into a higher room that's, that's seeing things and that's operating sim- similar to what the big players are doing just at a lower scale. But then they, then they actually mentioned like the Turo host. They're like, oh, yeah, that's, that's cute. That's you getting started. <laughs> like, so and I'm introducing myself. Yeah, I've been on Turo. I've been uh, renting out my cars. They're like, oh, that's, that's what's up. That's nice. Congratulations. Good for you. <laughs> so that's how, I, that's how I felt while I was out there. I'm like, 
I, I'm, it's time to level up, man. Like, it, I, there's a di- so you can see the difference in mentality, difference in how they operate, difference in how they to turn over their cars, how they're like, what what strategies are they using to market their cars? You see a whole different way of thinking in that room versus the Turo play. And oh. so that's why my mindset has evolved from Turo to actual car rental operator. Wow. Wow. Okay. So, 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 so with you being in this space and you, you doing what you do, are, are you, would you say you're a high, like detail oriented type person? Always have been. That's been my specialty from, from birth. I've always been or, organized and detail oriented. So it's always been like that for me. Okay. Okay. Cause I was going to ask, I was going to ask like how difficult would you say? So if you, if you weren't as detail oriented, mm-hmm. And then now being in this space, because I'm hearing like how you're breaking down attention to detail at this conference. They talked about this and, you know, they were breaking it down like this and that. Like, like, let's say right now you're at an eight being detail oriented. Like, let's say you was at a five. Mm -hmm. How difficult do you think it would be for that person to get the understanding of like the like running this? I was about to say Turo business, but running this rental car business. So keep in mind that nobody's good at everything. And mm-hmm. so I play to my strengths and for my weaknesses, guess what I do? Find somebody who knows how to do it best. That is my biggest, my biggest takeaway from this entire past year. I love the book called Who Not How. We read that in the morning meetup mm-hmm. because everybody wants to be this perfect being that knows how to do everything themselves. The reality is that you are gifted. Everybody is gifted at something. I may be the person that's detail oriented, so I can do what I'm gifted at very well. It was just like in the morning meetup. I'm very detail oriented, and I'm very. Um, I pay a lot. To, I pay a lot of attention to small details, and I can like I can type fast. So that allows me to sh- sh- uh, share my gift of being able to sh- uh, take notes. Like that's just me applying my sh- my gifts to a, some type of um, output. So the output is taking notes, but my gift really is just like attention, attention to detail, or just like and then also being consistent with it. So. That, that's just me using my gift in one form, but everybody is gifted in something. You have to figure out what is your gift and like how can you apply that to help you to make it advantageous for you to uh, in your business, really. So like for me, attention to detail, I can make sure I get spreadsheets created, things like that. Versus, let's take take my dad. My, that's my partner. Like mm-hmm. we we've been doing a business together. He is somebody who is a great negotiator. He's mm-hmm. somebody who has a gift of gab. He can go out to uh, have to build good relationships with other people. He can get the best deals for us. He can have, build up connections with the industry leaders. Versus me, I'll be in, I'll be in the back do, doing my spreadsheets, or I'll be uh, trying to get uh, practicing networking a little bit more, to um, and just asking the right questions. Find people that have the gift that you don't. And that's how you that's how you create a team. That's how you take the workload off of yourself. This is so that's developing the, the mentality of a business owner not somebody who's a self-employed trying to do everything themselves. I am very, very anti that at this point in my life. I'm very pro business owner because I don't want to do everything. Yeah. I'm just doing my strength. And everybody, somebody else has a strength that is my weakness. So whatever my weakness is, somebody, it's somebody else's strength. Let them do that. And so to answer your question, if, if you are at a five, find somebody who's at an eight or a 10. Mm, that's good, Marlon. That's good. That's good. Okay, so I want to I want to come back to your dad. Not I'm not gonna talk about him <laughs> right now, but we're gonna come back to him. But one thing that you brought up in my mind is another book that we read called The One Thing. Yes. Right. And and one thing that I've seen you do is drill down on this one thing. <laughs> that like, so what? For for one, what what was it for you to make the decision to say I'm going all the way in in the rental car business? What was it that said this is what I'm doing? I know there's other stuff going on out there. I know I could be doing other things, but what was it to where you were like this rental car business here? This is what I'm 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 digging in. This is where I'm I'm attacking, and this is gonna be my sole focus. I wish I could have found it faster for you. Oh, there this is it right here. So. Uh, where is it at? <laughs> so I made a um, a list back when I was in, what was this? Probably like late 2020, probably like September of 2020. I made a list. This was all the businesses that I was creating. I know the, the audience can't see it. I'm read it off to them though. I had rental properties, rental cars, tow trucks, trucking, t-shirt sales, course on tow trucks, my book, podcast sponsorships. Um, this is my girl. So she was like making a lot of different inventions. So I was, I was that to my job, pest control. And I still left off. Uh, I wanted to create an app and also uh, want to do stock options. That was 13 different things that I wanted to do at one time. 
I learned very strongly that year, that's insanity, to try to start everything at once. Because um, I actually re referred to this recently. Um, I joined the, so we, we talked about the morning meetup. That's, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, that's actually how we both met too. The morning meetup I joined in December of 2020. David Shans had did a, um, that's the uh, owner of the morning meetup. He did a, mm -hmm. a, a talk at the end of December. It says, let's do a reflection of the year. And my biggest reflection, because I had been going, because he was very big on, he was very pro do, uh, focus. Mm -hmm. So he had been saying that uh, constantly, and I've been seeing him, him post videos on it. I've been, I was hearing it in the morning meetup, and then he told us to do a reflection day uh, about how 2020 had went. That particular uh, day, I, was, I really reflected and said, man, I spent this entire year having like FOMO, fear of missing out, trying to do everything mm -hmm. at one time. And I, I, at the same time, I had some things that were working, but I wasn't giving it enough attention. So the rental car business, I, I started, so I did pretty much analyzed every single business that I, wanted, so I was trying to pursue. Everything you, single thing you saw on there, I analyzed each one of them and said, how am I doing in this? And so the rental car, I saw that we made like three or $4,000 that first year off of that, off of that one car. Mm. I put no effort into that car though. Wow. <laughs> like it was just, we were renting it out. But at the same time, I wasn't concerned with it because I'm trying to go learn about a tow truck or learn about <laughs> a pest control business or trade stock options yeah, yeah. or all, trying to create an app. All that stuff I was trying to do at the same time. And so I wasn't paying attention to what was working. So I had to take a step back and say, what is actually working for us right now versus what am I just wasting time doing trying to build multiple streams of income? If I focus on one thing, I can grow that and then I can actually branch off and get other streams within that one stream if you want to get build actual multiple streams of income the correct way in my opinion build something up to where it can start branching off because now i become an expert in, in this space yeah. i am surpassing turo and being able to say we can teach we can talk about how to become a car rental operator who's teaching that part mm -hmm. how many people have you seen to even talk about becoming a car rental operator or if you just see people saying run a turo play Getting itched down, Marlon. Find the problem. Getting itched down. Because right. there's because I've actually seen multiple times that people teach people how to get into the rental car business. No, how to how to start on Turo, mm -hmm. and then that, that's the extent of it. It's like okay, well, Turo, that's it. So now nobody has any direction about where to go further. So mm. there's still a problem that needs to be solved. Because for myself, I was looking high and low trying to figure out what's the next step after Turo. Because nobody's telling mm. nobody that part. Nobody because nobody's going that far. Everybody's stopping at Turo. That was, so I said, I found that was one thing in itself. Just by staying with something long enough, you start seeing that you are now the pioneer for something that nobody else has been doing Ooh. as far as not within our space. Ooh. 13 businesses at one time? Yeah. That, that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I started cutting them down one by one. I was like, not doing that no more because I started looking at like, what's the other ones uh, bringing in as far as income? Uh, Tow trucks was nothing. I was just, I was just studying. Uh, pest control was nothing. Like um, a mobile home that we had bought one mobile home. It was cash flowing like a couple hundred dollars. Then a dude moved out. <laughs> so, uh, that, so that was more problem than what it was worth. Um, we really say it was going well. We just, it was hard for us to find deals. It was just so, it was all this different attention going to all these different things. It's like, focus on something. I don't care what it is at this point. Uh -huh. Pick something that's working halfway decent and just let's lock in on it for, a, for a, like a two or one year or two years or something and see what we can come about from that. So would you, so would you say that you've turned over more money through your rental car business than you did in real estate? <sighs> yeah. As far as me actually being the, the uh, initiator of doing it, yes, because in the, in the real estate, back when we were doing real estate, I so most of our success in real estate came in San Antonio. So I had two partners out there that was doing most of the work. Mm. That's why I say the value of partnerships, because mm. if I, so one of my favorite quotes, if you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go far, you go together. Mm -hmm. I say that constantly because that was what allowed us to be able to have success in the real estate space early on. The problem came when everybody was trying to do all this other stuff. If you can all lock in on one thing, mm -hmm. it can be great. But if you were trying to do 15 different things, nothing's going to happen. Like you're going to be mediocre in everything versus being great at something. Like what do you want to be known for? How do you want to be able to leave your mark? What do you want to be an expert in? Lock in on that. that I can't preach that enough at this point. Because even if we had locked in on real estate, we'd probably be killing it in real estate. We have, it's like, there's a mentality that you got to have that, that can allow you to be good at anything, but you had to lock in on something long enough to be good at it. Like if we had just said, forget every, forget the rental cars, forget 
the, um, all the other business I was trying to start and let's just lock in on real estate, it will be the same result, I believe. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter about the business that we chose. It mm-hmm. matters what, what matters about the mentality of the person. So if we're confident in ourselves to be able to deliver good results, it's just a matter of staying with something. And so if you're not, if you just bounce all over the place, nothing's going to be good. Yeah, yeah, and and then I mean, it, and I think another piece of it too, and, and to add on to what you're saying, because you you're you're very studious. Like I've seen you, you know, I, like I've seen the game that you give out on on Instagram, Deuce Walls on Instagram. <laughs> Follow him, Deuce Walls on Instagram. Sure. Uh, but. Like I, I've seen how you break down different stuff, and I'm like, dang, okay, you talking about the tire treads? <laughs> yeah. You talking about getting dropped from insurance, and like you're breaking down different things. But in order to be able to share that information, one, you got to have experience in the Facts. game. But then on top of that, just like you said, you have to go deeper, and you you have to invest in education because I mean, you've learned and learned, and then went to a conference and learned some more. But if people aren't learning, then you're not figuring out the problem, so then you can't be the solution. I think David Shanza posted something that was profound for me. Um, I, I forgot. It was a while back, too. It was. It really hit me, too. I think he said something along the lines of, you made like the first 50000 75000 100000 in your business. That's cool. And now you're a coach in it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which I... I, so he does a lot of things for engagement, for sure. Mm-hmm. But it had, it had some truth to it. Because yeah, what yeah. happens, a lot of people will um, start a business with the sole intent just to go teach it. So they get to a level three and say, all right, I hit my level, it's time to teach. That's true. But what happens at the same time, because he, he, didn't, he didn't finish the sentence on that, um, on that post, whatever uh-huh. post it was. I remember he said, I don't think he said, he didn't say the full thing. He said, that's cool and all, but, and then like lift it at the end. <laughs> and he came in the morning to meet up the next day and said, um, that post could have been for somebody like Marlon. It's like, you, okay, you, you did good in your business, and now you're able, to, you're able to coach in it, which is what he encourages. So I can teach people who are at a lower level than you. Mm-hmm. But he, he said, the, I left a butt at the end to say, continue to grow the business. Mm. A lot of people don't do that part. Because they, wow. they get into the teaching, they say, man, this is way, I, I can make a lot more money in teaching. But what happens in the long run, you, you um, become outdated. Because all this work that you That's did true. was now from three years ago. and Because you, you stopped running the business to go teach it. And so if you're not continuously doing it, you don't know what's happening as, as, as the industry continues to update. So before long, the money that you make from teaching is going to be gone anyway. Because like, whatever money you made first couple years, that's cool and all, but not what you're going to do in year three when your information that you're giving out is three years removed from what's actually, what's actually happening today. Ooh, and then plus like how laws and stuff change. Because I know My what happened point. like with Uber, and I'm not sure <laughs> if it happened with like some of the rental cars like across the, like, across the country, but... It's just like they switch up stuff because these unions and stuff, people ain't happy. So, yeah, just just to your point, that that's that, that's a big deal. So, since you had, because you you you've been you've been coaching and teaching people, correct? Right? How what 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 would you say? Like, what would you say is one of your like most memorable client stories? Or like, talk talk to us, talk to us. Uh, so I would say we have one guy that. So my dad actually works with this guy too. Um, literally from day one, he was a go-getter. So my dad actually had some conversations with him before we had put out our prog- first program. Excuse me. And um, literally, we put out the program. Um, it's about how to like how to get more cars in your fleet mm-hmm. and things like like just re- pretty much getting ready to start your rental car business. Um, literally two weeks after that program, after he had like gone through it, he had five more cars. I'm like. Oh dang, this dude different, right? Five, and he st- yes. how many he start with? Well, he start, I, I think he started off with like two, and then he's just, oh, he, just he just jumped he, up because he said one hundred percent increase. Shoot, that's need, like two hundred percent increase, two hundred fifty percent, something like that. So yeah, no, he jumped in really quickly after that. He's still going to this day too. So like that's what I like to see the most is people who jump in and stay in though, because um the challenge is not so much getting started. The challenge is is the longevity piece of who's who's building out the systems to be able to maintain it. Because, like I said, you can run the play and get three, four cars or five cars or whatever. But what happens is that people, they burn out because they never built a system to be able to operate the business. They've been doing everything themselves. They took an employee mentality over into a business world, and now they're acting as the employee in their own business. And so what happens Mm. with any self-employed business is that you eventually are going to burn out. You don't have any team. If you don't have any systems, and you don't have any processes. This is goes. Now, I'm I'm very big on teaching business principles. I'm not just rental car. I'm mm-hmm. I'm big on just b- general business That's principles good. because this can apply anywhere. It doesn't just apply to 
the rental car business. That's good. And so when you get into business, you need to be thinking, how can I make this to where it's working for me, not me working for it? And most people don't come in like that because they're just all worried about making a little bit extra money. But they don't. But at the same time, this is a that's why that's the downside to Turo is that it's allowing you to run a business, but you don't it's you don't have a business mentality. So people are saying, okay, I'm gonna buy this car. I'm rent out on Turo. I'm gonna pay it off in five years. Well, in a rental car business, do you understand that this car is a depreciating asset? So it can make you money as an asset, but it depreciates and it's gonna become a liability as it gets more miles on it. So what we used to have um, fifty thousand miles on it in the rental car business, you may see thirty or forty thousand miles put on that car per year. So mm. what happens when that car? You said five years. You want to have that car? So let's multiply 40 times five, that's 200,000. So in five years, you wanna still be running the same play, you're gonna have 240,000 miles on your car and it's not gonna act like it did back when it had 40,000. So people, what people don't learn, what people are not teaching people and what they're not thinking about is the fact that this is a business. So the rental, like the enterprise, the Hertz, I, 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 anybody that's listening, <laughs> I gotta look at the camera for this, <laughs> anybody listening, I want y'all to go, go to Hertz or go to enterprise Go rent one of their cars and just screen. Just send me a screenshot of their odometer. Tell me if I just, I'll give anybody a thousand dollars. Find me somebody. Find me a, a Hertz car that has a hundred thousand miles plus on it. Mm. Just go find me one. I'll mm. send it to you. Just make sure you screenshot. Make sure you say show me that it's from Hertz. Give me the receipts. I got to see all the details because I I do not believe that's a thing. Why? Because they are running an actual business that says we have to turn over these cars at a certain point. Most people are not thinking about that. That's because they're just getting on here saying about to make some extra extra passive income on Turo. And they're not thinking as a business owner because you need to have an extra strategy with your cars, not just buy them. But when are you going to sell it? How many how many miles are you going to sell it at? Um, is there a strategy behind it or are you just making it up? All these things are important. So Marlon, from a, from a high level, right? Because I know you got the course. I know you got everything. From a high level, somebody's like... I I just I wanna I wanna start a rental car business. Yep. What 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 does that look like from a high level, Marlon? Talk to us. I think the education is the most important thing. So I am talking at a, a little bit of a advanced level right now, but at the very beginning stages, we didn't know any of this. <laughs> I'll break it back like bring it back down to where we were in the very in August of twenty twenty. All we knew is that the, we were gonna buy our first car and we were gonna rent it out on hire car. And mm. it's okay to be at that at that stage. What I was big on, which I'm thankful, is the exit strategy. So mm. we were. So if you can start off with just that, saying I'm gonna buy a car at this point, I can rent it out for this point, and I can sell it at this point. That's a good starting point. Mm. I'm I'm selling when it hits this amount of miles. That is plenty to get started. Because for us, my goal was to buy buy a car that had less than fifty thousand miles on it, and sell it by the time we got to ninety thousand. Simple process. Because um, what was it? There's three, three phases of the, of the rental car business. There's the acquisition, the rental, and the sale. Most people only focus on the rental. The problem with focusing on just the rental is that you, you neglect how much you're paying on the acquisition. That phase is actually the most important of the three because that affects, that affects, two, that affects the other two actually directly. The acquisition, if you overpay for a car, you will probably be running it, you'll probably make as little cash flow as possible, if any, during the rental, because let's say a, a car note may cost four hundred dollars, and your um, on, if you got a good car note, it co- costs four hundred dollars, and you may you may make like a thousand a month on that car, and so uh, mm. you can you can make cash flow six hundred off of that versus if you pay seven hundred for that car, the same car because you hit like seven hundred dollar car note for that one, now you're making three hundred a month, then you go to sell it at the very end, Ooh. and you will find out that you're underwater on the car by like a couple thousand dollars. So all the cash flow you made just got paid right back. So like I said, just to break it down in simple terms, focus in on studying how can I buy good deals. That's my that was my main part. Mm-hmm. Can I how can I buy a good deal? So that's the, I would educate myself on that piece first, and then learn how can how can I analyze my market. We actually made an entire um I made an entire training on this to be honest. So I just mm-hmm. recently came out with it too. Okay. It's called um, Deal Hacker Secrets: How to Analyze a Good Make Sure Make Sure You Analyze a Good Deal for Any Market. And so that, that training, like I said, just, just came out. You can go to analyze.rebusolve.com. And so Rebusolve is R-E-B-U-S-O-L-V-E.com. And that is, we made a, like a, it's like a 15 minute training, it's free actually. 
and uh, people can learn how to make sure they analyze a good deal for any market. That's what we, as I said, focus in on that part. That way, the rest of it's gonna take care of itself. The, mm -hmm. the sale and the, um, no, the, the rental and the sale will take care of themselves if you buy a good deal. Most people are buying bad deals, which means everything else is, is bad as well. Dang. So we're gonna we're gonna have a link down for you in the show yeah. notes so y'all can so y'all can tap in, tap into the genius of Marlon. Because y'all, when I tell you this brother been locked in on rental car, because he said when you think of rental cars, you think of Hertz, like Enterprise, some of the other people. When I think of rental cars, <laughs> I think of this dude. Okay. So and there's there's no for question sure. about it. I don't I don't think of nobody else. Every time I, I met a guy on a plane, he was talking about, he was like, yeah, I'm thinking about wanting to get into rental car space. I was like, hey, you got to follow this. <laughs> Every time, if somebody says something about That's rental dope, cars, I'd be like, hey, you got to follow, hey, you got to follow Deuce Walls on Instagram. So just so, just so you know, I'm, I'm out here, I'm out yeah, here I representing. Because I seen, I seen you had the, you got the ebook, I seen you got the program, and then I see what you're doing and just on top of what you just said, did another training. Cause you up just like software, right? You gotta update the that's software. What, that's on your, what I'm saying. You gotta be in it long enough to be updating else. your stuff. So yeah, 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 man. So what, what's it? What's it like doing business? Like, have you and your dad always had like a good relationship? Yes. Now, to be honest, that is a gift in itself to be able to do business with with your father like that. So I I don't take that for granted because I know that that's not something that's very common, especially not in our community to be able to run a business with your dad and that y'all both can be in sync and not clash. Cause really. Um, he uh, it, like he looks at me as just very proud to see like everything that I've been able to um, learn and accomplish. And so now we both run it together. I'm more so the visionary of the company. He but he's a great supporter. Though. Like I said, he we both have our strengths. Mm -hmm. I'm the like as far as the visionary for where the company is going. That's what I do. At the same time, he I, I, I defer to him for a lot of stuff. I, I I like to fall back to answer him questions, especially in regards to making like financial decisions. Like, okay, do you think this is a good idea? That helps out a lot. So we have a great a great relationship even before this, though. So that is a blessing for sure. That's dope, man. That's dope. Yeah, because I didn't have the best relationship with my dad before, but me and him like we're we're cool now. Mm -hmm. We talk. We are able to talk business and. It's more he's more so like a friend now than like right. you know since now you get a little older. Yep. <laughs> yeah, different level of conversations, but that, that, but yeah, man, that's that, that's really dope. And I'm 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 I mean, I I commend him on, you know, seeing the type of son that he's contributed to cultivating and I can I commend both of you all for, you know, doing this cuz just like you said, I don't know many businesses to where we see father and son in the same business. Right. Killing it. And y'all are killing it, man. <laughs> Y'all are killing it, man. I'm just, I'm wait. This is like a calm before the storm for me. Still, it's like we still haven't grazed the surface of where I'm trying to go to. So, Dang. What, what what is that? Where is that? Where are you trying I to mean, go to, man? This, we still operate a lot on Turo, even though like um, we have like even the website built out. We just got the business cards built out. We are starting nice. to network with a lot more offline, um, like offline vendors. Like we're doing a lot more in that space now as opposed to what we did in the past. And it's just a matter of time. Like we still waiting to get the dealer's license. We're, it's so many different things that's going to allow us to unlock the next level Ooh. that hasn't even been done yet. Ooh. So it's like, just wait on it. <laughs> that's okay. how I feel right now. It's like, man, it's just a calm before the storm for me. It's because I see so much greater that we haven't even tapped into. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, so talk, talk, talk with us about the talk with us about the Money Monopolizers podcast. Mm -hmm. Talk, talk, talk a little bit about that, man. What, like, when, where? What is the focus of Money Monopolizers for those people who don't know? And then also, yeah, just, just take, take some time with it, man. Take some time with for it. For sure. So the podcast is between me and my uh, friend from um, junior high. So we both met in junior high school, like literally as like 13, 14 years. No, probably not. I think they're 12, <laughs> wow. 13 year olds. And um, we always had a mentality for being the best at whatever we did. And so I, that's probably one thing that we um, gel with the, well the most is just trying to be the best at anything. So for myself, I always wanted to just do my best and like uh, put in the best efforts like to get the best result. Him, he would want to be the best. Like I'm, he's just like very competitive. So we both had that internal rivalry with, really, with each other, always trying to um, not really one up each other, but always trying, pushing each other to do to be the best version of, of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so that same mentality transferred from the classroom to offline playing uh, to NBA 2K, to uh, college, and then even to the workforce. And so I was a mechanical engineer, he was a civil engineer. Mm. And um, when we got to the workforce, um, he's always been, he was always like more of the entrepreneurial mentality person. So he wanted to find a way to where he has, a, where he can make money without having to go trade in time for money for 40 years straight. 
And so he started seeking out different things. He actually read a book called Rich Dad Poor Dad mm -hmm. back in, um, I think, 2019 time. And right, right when I graduated from college, um, I just started working in the workforce. For the, that was my first time actually working in the workforce ever. Like I never had had a job before um, graduating from college. Dang. That was because of the fact I was playing football. So I was always doing football, some type of camp, whether it's summer camp, fall camp, winter camp. There was always something mm -hmm. that was preventing yeah, me from <laughs> getting into actual work. So I'm working for the first time, full time, and I learned how little I really knew about the financial world when it came time to get my first paycheck. Didn't even know what taxes were. So I'm, oh, I think I talked about that in the first episode too. <laughs> so I I knew little next to nothing about financial literacy, and so we had both. Uh, well, he recommended Rich Dad Poor Dad to me, and I read that book in like literally two days because my whole mind was just changed after that. And now I'm actually like a byproduct of reading that book uh, all the years ago. I read it back in 20. Actually, I, this this actually started early. <laughs> 2018 is when he read it. Wow. Like, so yeah, I read that book in 2018, and um. And literally, on, on, ever since then, we've been on just a journey. And so the podcast got started about a, a year after we had uh, got got on our financial freedom journey. So, we, mm. so that's what the podcast is about: is financial freedom. So it's, it was really us telling our journey, telling our story about what what we're doing on a week to week basis, and then also interviewing different people who have achieved what we're trying to achieve. So whether that's financial freedom, whether that's um, being able to live the life that they want to, building different businesses successfully, investing, like trying to just learn from those different people and then share what we're learning with everybody else. Hmm. Got you, man. I got you. I got you. So, so like, do, do y'all have goals for the podcast or is the podcast y'all just, what, talk, just what, what, what does the goal look like for the podcast? Because, I mean, like I, like I seen the following grow on the, on the podcast, right. on YouTube and on Instagram and stuff like that. So talk about that. So the podcast, we've been very consistent with just continuously putting out uh, different content. I would say the only drawback for both of us is that we both continue, like I said, with the same thing with real estate, we both are operating our own, our own things right now. Mm. So it's very, it's very challenging. And I even said this to anybody else, it's challenging to build multiple things at the same time to a grand scale. So it's true. that's why we try to maintain, like if, we're, if we want to do multiple things, I would recommend maintaining one thing to help to uh, pretty much like which one are you going to sacrifice for the sake of growing something else big so mm. with everything that you decide to do is opportunity cost opportunity cost pretty much means what are you willing to give up for the sake of something better or something an alternative so for both of us we went to build our personal businesses and so the podcast we we stay consistent with mm -hmm. but as far as the just if we like I, like i said earlier with real estate if we locked in on just the podcast only and did nothing else I would say, man, it would be top of the charts because just our mentality that we have of our approach to everything, we would um, be able to, that's, that's the type of results we would be able to get because the same level of energy as far as the research, the uh, trying to continue to study different people, stay in different courses, that, all that same energy that we're putting into our businesses would be put, put into the podcast. Mm. And so right now it's, we're more of an, and it maintains a situation where we continue to tell our story, continue to tell our journey, continue to bring on different guests. But as far as like trying to grow it a whole lot at the moment, it's uh, that's just more of a challenge, just because of the fact of how much how many other commitments we have outside of it. Yeah, definitely, I understand it. It makes sense. It, it definitely makes sense. I mean, y'all got that thing on autopilot, but that thing is still it's <laughs> yeah, still moving. So it's just about like I said, we're being consistent because I without one thing I always believe with the podcast is that it's only a matter of exposure. Because oh, yeah. if people actually just see what we're what we're doing, what we're talking about. They're gonna they're gonna love what what, what it is in, in itself because they're they're gonna enjoy watching the journey unfold from beginning of the podcast to where we are today. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of exposure. So we just even had that alone. Like it's just it's a whole another level as far as the growth of it. So yeah, man, for sure. I mean, cause the, like cause the the, the content y'all put out y'all y'all put out really good content. Just like you said, y'all have dope guests. Uh, but with with the podcast though is it a is it a challenge with you all having the podcast that you have and and then bringing people on and getting to hear these success stories of you know these people that brought brought in like these ungodly amounts of money like mm -hmm. is it a challenge that you want to be like ooh i might want to i might want to check out that course yeah. <laughs> no that's that's always been a challenge that's and it it was an unknowing challenge in the beginning, which is why mm. I had those that list of thirteen. Because every time somebody came on, like, oh, that's good right there. Let me go ahead and get into that course real quick. <laughs> get that mobile home course. Let me get that stock option course. Let me get that uh, tow trucking course. Like, you just want to get everything. 
So that does take a level of discipline to say, I'm going to focus in on this. I don't care what you're doing over there because I'm locked in on this right now and I'm going to grow this because I'm going to become an expert in this. Because the thing about it, even if you switch businesses, you're not going to be an expert in that business. You're going to just be just getting started in that That's business. True. That's true. And so it's going to take the same amount of time that you're doing in your first business to become an expert. You're going to do the same thing for this other one. So it's That's continuously true. restarting in another field. And But you're thinking that that field is going to be instant success for a lot of people. They feel like it's going to be instant success, but in reality, you're going to get over there. You have to learn the ropes all over again. So I, I choose right now to stay in the field that I'm already have an upper leg on to be able to continue to polish my craft and what I'm already doing. And then in the future, if you do want to switch over, hopefully you build out the systems in place to where that business can continue to run without you. That's mm. why I'm so big on the business owner aspect rather than self-employed, because I would like for even even right now. I would say that I probably do 10% of the work inside the rental car business. For As far as like day-to-day -day operation, I don't clean no cars no more, just to be straight up. Mm. Like That's why you bring, you bring in a team to liberate the time. Why, so for anybody that's building a business, why did you build a business? Most people did not build a business because they wanted to go work for themselves. Most people built it for freedom. That's why people say we're looking for the quote-unquote passive income because they wanted something, something that could pay them without them having to work for it. If you don't ever build systems to where people work for you or the systems work for you in the business, you're always you're going to be instead of be working for somebody else, you're going to work for yourself and always have to be working. My goal is to be able to remove myself from the business and continue to run. So now once you have done that, now you can start looking around and saying, OK, what other thing can I attack? But not before then, because once if you are the only person working in your business and you want to go do something else, what's going to happen to your business? It's going to just drop, like the sales going to immediately drop and income is going to immediately drop and now you're starting over. I don't want to start over. I wanted something to continue to run and it's going to pay me to learn other stuff because mm -hmm. I built this up to where it's paying me now to where now I can, I've afforded myself the opportunity to go learn something new and I don't have to worry about paying the light bill uh, with my new thing. I can actually learn on my own pace now. So that's the mentality I'm taking to it as opposed to jump into something else too early. Talk your talk, Marlon. Talk your cause you. I mean, cause just the, just the other day you was on. I mean, he posted on Instagram. You was on a cruise, <laughs> and my man said the business is still booming. Yes, like that. That is really the. That should be the goal for anybody running a business. I, I personally don't believe anybody got into business from going from working employee to working in business so that they can do do all the work, all the internal labor of the business every time, like because you're not going to be able to ever take a break. Mm -hmm. Like taking that vacation would mean an immediately, an immediate either a drop in your in your income, or a severe decline if you take a vacation and you are the only person that's working in your business. Because who else is going to work for it if you're not there? That's why I'm mm -hmm. so big on you have like, in the beginning I actually rather so my newfound philosophy now is like I rather hire people to make sure that I keep my time free. Because I'm doing that for the sake of being able to go grow the business to where it's going to now support everybody and support myself outside. But what's going to happen is that if I'm doing all the, in, in, all the work inside the business, it's, nothing's going to happen for growth. I'm not going to be able to grow it. I'm only going to be able to maintain it because I'm not actually able to work on the growth tasks of the business. I'm only working on the day-to-day -day busy tasks. I can't work, worry about how to get a dealer's license or how to scale our fleet or how to get a, our own lot or how to um, become our own independent operator mm. if I'm busy cleaning the car. Ooh. I can't, uh, that, that is a, I don't have enough time in a day. Dang. I can't run a fleet of 30 cars if I'm cleaning every single one of them. Imagine 15 cars coming back in a day and I gotta clean each one of them. Who's gonna work on the growth tasks of the business? Dang. Nobody. And so that's why you have to, like I'd rather take no money out the business and I leave, and I leave it all for the employees that way, because they, I'm paying them to keep me keep me free. Because when mm. I'm free, I get to go uh, build. And when I build, that I get to bring back more money for us to now be able to share for everybody. Then I can take the money out of that as opposed to trying to take all the money up front. I'm paying, the, if I'm make, able to make money right now, get that to the people that to keep your time free. That's the mentality that I go in with. That's good, Marlon. Cause that's probably like an eight to what eight to maybe twelve dollar an hour job doing the car, yep. like vacuuming out the cars, if that. And then Correct. you know, going to but you landing a lot. That's that's a that's a different tax bracket right there. <laughs> like that. So it's just, like I said, the biggest thing for me wasn't even scaling the fleet. It was really the mentality that it takes to run a larger fleet, mm -hmm. and that's what I've been developing over the past. 
I mean, it's, his entire year has been about that, just developing as a business owner rather than a person that's running a play on Turo. Gotcha. Boom, boom. Well, Martin, look, we're going to get ready to land this plane, man. We're going to get ready <laughs> to land this plane. Now, I, want, I, got, I got a few rapid fire questions I, I want to ask you. This is just, just, for, just for a little fun, fun. Uh, so, uh, so, Marlon, are you ready? Let's get it. All right, here we go. Here we go. Favorite cereal? Uh, uh, Frosted Flakes. <laughs> mm, Coke or Pepsi? Uh, neither. <laughs> you, you I do Sprite. Sprite. Oh, okay, okay, I, okay. I, I wouldn't have been surprised dark. if you didn't drink Coke. Wouldn't yeah. Surprised. When it comes to chicken sandwiches, Chick Fil A or Popeye? Chick Fil A. So I would have went with Popeyes, but I don't like that they give me the sauce for the. Um, I'm not a big sauce person. I really? Like, I like the spicy chicken sandwich from um, Chick Fil A. I like the spicy Chick Fil A sauce. So, okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Beaches or mountains? Whew, that's a good one right there. Um, man, how long I got to answer that? <laughs> I like, so I like both, but I'm, I'm going to say mountains. I haven't seen them enough yet, so probably more Do you mountains. go hiking? Yep. Um, me and my girl, she uh, went there for our um, engagement photos. We went oh, to Montana. Oh, you were, y'all was like on a mountain or something. Yep. Mm, okay. So I, I okay. definitely like them. I, li- I like that. I like nature and just that adventure, so I'm going to say mountains for that. Okay, okay. What's your what's your go to rental car of choice that you would purchase, not that you would drive? What's your go to rental car of choice? And Chevy Corvette all day. That's my dream car right there. <laughs> it's only a matter of time. Everybody says Maserati for me, I know, but Chevy Corvette's been my dream car since I was in junior high. Is it? It's not too low for you when you get in. Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Don't care. <laughs> Oh, God. Marlon, man, appreciate you. Let, let the people know where they can find you, how they can follow you. And, you know, we, we'll have whatever links you want to give me down yeah. in the show notes. But let, let the people know, man. Yeah, let for them sure know. or not. So y'all can tap in just at Deuce Walls on Instagram and TikTok. Um, that's D-E-U-C-E-W-A-L-L-S. And then, I mean, I have lots of different links that you can tap into. I would just start off at Rebusolve.com. It's R-E-B-U-S-O-L-V-E.com. Boom. There it is. There it is. Y'all, the, rent, the rental car, the king, the king of the rental car business. The king of the rental car business, and I'm saying that based on what I've seen. I'm saying that based on seeing this man's attention to detail with notes. <laughs> but, uh, man, I'm, I'm saying that because I've I seen the receipts. I've seen the receipts. I know people who he's helped. So, man, Marlon Walls, thank you, brother, for stopping yes, by. No, thank you, man. Thanks for I having me I appreciate you. Yeah, man, for sure, for sure. And you all know, uh, as we go ahead and get ready to end this, I want you all to, to, to know Uh, Be sure to subscribe and follow to the podcast, your podcast mentor on all platforms and make sure to follow, follow Marlon, Uh, go to the link, check him out, man. Check him out. If you have thought that you wanted to get in the rental car business, there's no better person that I would co-sign or tell you to go work with than Marlon Walls. So, all right, family, until next time, peace. God bless.